Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Paul Tilly, and welcome to the final unit of AC1260 Financial Accounting 1. Today we are looking at payroll accounting, which is very important because every business pays someone. So there's payroll in every single business, and this is something we have to be familiar with. The learning objectives for this particular unit will identify the taxes and other items frequently withheld from employees' wages. We're going to make calculations necessary to prepare a payroll register and prepare the entries to record the payroll liabilities. We're going to calculate payroll costs levied by our non-employers and prepare the entries to record the accrual payment of these accounts. And we're going to calculate and record employees' fringe benefits cost. First of all, you're probably more familiar with this from someone receiving money as pay than someone paying the money. So let's just take a look at your paycheck. So from the employee's perspective, your paycheck represents a part of your total remuneration. In other words, some of it gets pulled away before you ever get it. Your employer is mandated to make deductions from the toll, and the total pay is what we call our gross pay. So our gross pay deductions are drawn from that. These deductions typically include uh, a number of things. They must include employees tax deductions, that is tax that is drawn out in the form of income tax payment that you're going to pay based on your income. It's going to be also you'll see a deduction there for the Canada Pension Plan provided that you're over the age and under the necessary ages and we'll look at the necessary ages in this unit. And there's going to be money drawn out for employment insurance and this is for uh, the, this is basically a premium that you pay that's based on your salary that um, is for insurance in the event you get laid off. After those mandatory deductions, there could be other deductions as well, but those are the mandatory ones. And after all of the deductions are drawn from your paycheck, you get a check for an amount of money. That is known as your net pay. And you'll notice your net pay is less than your gross pay. The difference between net and gross and would be the amount that you're paying in form of deductions. So that was from your perspective. Now let's look at it from the employer's perspective. So here you are now, you're an employer and you're paying out payroll and you need recorded each payroll period. So from an organization's perspective, payroll makes up a significant share of their expenses. You've got to imagine that you're paying people, that's a good chunk of money that you have to put out in your organization. So it requires uh, diligence with regards to record keeping. Employers are mandated to take deductions from the employee's gross pay. These deductions include the employer's tax deductions, contributions to CPP, and employment insurance. In addition, employees are also responsible for their mandated share of their contributions to EI and CPP and other contracted employee benefit contributions. So effectively, the you know, if you're an employee, you're seeing stuff come out of your paycheck, as I just said, but the employer contributes as well. And in the case of Canada Pension Plan, the employer pays one to one. So for every dollar you pay, the employer pays a dollar. In the case of employment insurance, for every dollar you pay, the employer pays a dollar forty. So as you can see, it's a big responsibility from the employer in order to make sure that these amounts are done properly and they're remitted properly. So employers are absolutely responsible for making these proper deductions from their employees' earnings and the employees' deductions as well as the employer's contribution must be remitted to the receiver general at a specified period of time. In terms of taxation, tax is deducted based on wages earned and personal tax credit and there's no matching employer contribution to income tax. So the basic question is, and is how much are employers required to deduct? Well, the basic answer to this question is found on CRA's website where you can actually go in and type in the amount that you are going to pay and they will indicate to you how much you need to deduct for income tax, Canada Pension Plan, and the EI. Every province is a little bit different, so there's no one pat answer. There are minimums uh, in terms of income that you need to earn in order to pay these, but generally what you're going to find is if you go to the Canada Revenue website and you punch in the numbers, it will define for you how much you need to deduct and from there you'll determine 
what it will cost in terms of your expenses. Okay, so the best way in order to be able to determine how much deductions are, or to be able to calculate deductions, is go to the Canada Revenue Agency's Payroll Deductions website. So I'm just going to go right to it here. It's called Canada Revenue Agency Payroll Online Calculator. So you're going to click here, you're going to go through it, and you'll see a lot of the COVID information there. You have to click I Accept. So what you're doing is you're looking for salary in this case. There could be others, but let's just say salary. And the employee's name. And the uh, employer's name. And we have to select province because every province would have different rates for tax deduction. Uh, let's say that the frequency is weekly just for the purposes of this. And the start date, let's say that's 0101 here, 02. Okay, next. And let's assume we're paying $1,000 a week, just to keep it simple, okay? So there is the amount of wages that we're paying. Uh, we'll ignore vacation pay. So that would be that. And from there, then, we have the total claim. So if you fall under this, generally you don't have to do anything with these things. And, you know, this is a more complex for people. Let's not bother with that you'll notice that the employers raise 1.4 calculate here so effectively the results will give you this this information here minimum the total cash income was a thousand the pay period thousand the federal deduction will be here the provincial for Newfoundland will be here so that's the total deductions of 180.47, CPB deductions of 50.83, EI deductions of 15.80. So this shows you the deductions. And effectively then, you use that in order to be able to calculate your net pay. Okay, so hopefully that's a little bit insightful. You want to go and check this out. And as I say, best thing to do is to Google uh, the uh, Employment Payroll Calculator, Deductions Calculator. Of course, the payroll calculator that the federal government provides you only covers off the mandatory deductions. Depending on the contracts that you have with employees, there could be other deductions such as donations for charitable organizations, private pension plans, health accident insurance, and merchandise purchased from the company deductions for those types of things. Those would all be recorded. Further to the standard deductions and payments too, the Canada Revenue Agency, employers are required to report wages and deductions both to each employee and CRA office on or before the last day of February. This information is contained on the T4 statement that is delivered to the employee on that day for the purposes of calculating your taxes. You can see a T4 here. This T4 document, for example, will have the employer's name on the left the year, the employment income, the income tax deducted, the employee's contributions to Canada Pension, the employee's contributions to earnings, the pensionable earnings available to the employee, the employee's EI premiums, the union dues, which are tax deductible, charitable donations, which are tax deductible, and any other bits of information that will be included for the purposes of calculating the employee's income tax. Now that we know the basics behind payroll and how it is done, let's look at the mechanics of recording payroll. The first thing is employers normally have what's called a payroll register. And all a payroll register does is it records for each employee key pieces of information such as gross pay, deductions, and net pay. And they're all summarized by pay period for each employee. Columns are also provided for employee earnings, each deduction that the employee would have, net payment amounts, the actual pay that went out to the employee, the check number in which the, the check was written, the salary expense account to be debited for that employee. Different employees might be uh, connected with different accounts. So that way, for example, uh, different divisions of the company would have separate accounts. The design of the payroll register is really, really dependent on the company and the needs of management and the requirements of various payroll-related laws. Payroll entries must be also journalized. And, you know, journaling 
these entries we've seen for example the various flows of money here's an example of a typical payroll um, uh, amount so for example and, and you would take all the salaries and combine them together for this normally so for example the salaries expense will be recorded first and that will be debit for 2050 and office salaries expense a different type of salary would be 1514 in this particular example now credit it would be things like EI payable employees income tax payable employees health insurance payable CPP payable and salaries payable you will see that really the salary expense and the office is really reflecting the gross pay less the various deductions and the salaries payable then would be equivalent to the net payable the net payable would in turn be reflected in the payroll uh, of the individual employees basically the the paycheck of the employee so the employer pay its employees by check or electronic funds transfer employers give each employee an earning statement each payday showing the hours work gross pay deductions and net pay the information found on the check record that we just saw would be recorded in the employees individual earnings record which provides a summary of working times gross earnings deductions and net pay for the year it also provides information to serve as a basis for an employee's payroll tax returns and indicates when earnings have been received, the maximum amount of CPP and EEI deductions uh, tells when they have been reached, and serves as a basis of the employee's T4. So this is a running tally, really, of the pay as it is paid out. Here's a, an example of an employee's individual earnings record. So you'd have all the contact and personal information of the employee at the top, and then you would have your payroll register which would indicate for example the pay period the when the payday was how many hours it was potential when they were sick or when they were off total hours worked and the gross pay all the deductions total deductions net pay check number and uh, cumulus of each of those so that way we can kind of keep track of when we've maxed out our CPP and our EI contributions and just to keep a running tally for the purposes of your T4. Now we also need to record a journal entry to reflect the employer's contributions to the deductions, okay? So for example, as I said at the very beginning, employment insurance is paid at the, the employer pays 1.4 times what the employee pays and CPP is a matched contribution so what we need to do is to reflect that in a journal entry where we record EI expense and CPP and you can see in the example here 8282 and 15643 those would be the two expenses and in the credit will be EI payable 8282 and this is to reflect the fact that it's going to get paid to the receiver general at some point in time and CPP payable 156.43 which again reflects a payable that will be paid at some point in time to the federal government. So as employers deduct these deductions from the payroll and the employer makes his or her contributions to these deductions that money is held in trust until the 15th of the month of the following month that is after the pay period that uh, the money has to be then sent to Revenue Canada as the source deductions so we need to record that and you can see here we've tallied up in this particular case the EI payable which includes the employees contribution plus the employers contribution we can see it's 141.96 as well the CPC CPP contribution which is a match 156.43 156.43 the uh, insurance payable, this would be a, a particular uh, entry that would go off to whoever the insurance company would be. So that's the employee pays the contribution on that. And the employee's income tax payable, the employee paid the full contribution on that. So these things are held in trust. And at a point in time, then these accounts will be cleared out as a check is written and sent off to the provider or to the federal government. Okay, we set up those accounts and we're holding those amounts that we've held back from the employees plus our contributions as an employer now the time has come to actually send that off to the federal government so how do we do that well we need to write a journal entry as we write a check and the journal entry would be 
to debit the EI payable that was set up, the employee's income tax payable that was set up, and the CPP payable that was set up. So you can see all those tallied up would draw from our cash of $889.09 in this particular case. And you would see that that would effectively work towards zeroing those accounts. Finally, in this payroll section, I wanted to note that one of the benefits that employees get is a vacation period. And depending on how long the employee is with the company, they get either two or three weeks worth of paid vacation. So, how do we record that? Well, the expense is accrued as the employees work. So, and when we reach the end of the year, for example, let's assume some employees have accumulated a certain amount of a vacation payable, and we're going to record that expense at the end of the period. Benefit of the expense, $800, and the estimated vacation pay liability, $800. When the time comes for the employee to actually take the vacation, the liability is debited and credit the cash so that the employees get paid for the vacation period. Anyway, that is that section. I hope you do the problems just to get a good handle on it. It is an important section. Thank you for watching.